What's up everyone, as I continue to go through some survivor horror based video games, I decided to focus on this one called Fatal Frame. It's also been known as Project Zero in Japan and Europe. Basically Fatal Frame is a third person survivor horror game with some first person elements. It was developed by Tecmo and released in Japan in 2001 and in North America and Europe in 2002 on the PlayStation 2 and the Xbox. The director, Makoto Shibata, was inspired by his real life dreams and encounters with paranormal occurrences, which may explain why the game comes with a based on a true story tagline. The first thing you'll notice is the resemblance to Silent Hill, and this is intentional as Shibata was a huge fan of the series. And this is understandable as Silent Hill was a revolutionary to Silvara Horror gameplay. So Shibata had to see it at the time as this game was released in 2001 and was influenced by it. And you'll see as you do the controls throughout the game. But anyway, let's get into the story. The story is set in 1986 and it follows siblings Miku and Mafuyu Hisaki. The story begins when Manafuyu begins to search for a mystery novelist named Jinsei Takamini. Takamini went to a infamous mansion called the Himura Mansion with his team as he is a mystery writer and he was looking to get some inspiration to write an upcoming book based on the ritual murders that had happened in the village year and years past. Well, Mafuyu, however, disappears while looking for him. Miko becomes very worried about this and begins to look for him and as the story progresses, you learn that Miko and Mafuyu are clairvoyants. Was a clairvoyant? Well... I see dead people. You also find out that Miku and Mahayu's mother was also clairvoyant. And before she passed, she let them have this camera called the Obscura. Now, I'm gonna get to the Obscura in the gameplay and controllers, but basically it's a camera that can harm ghosts and capture ghosts. But anyway... Let's get to the gameplay and controls. Let me just start off saying that the controls are very clunky and they take some time to get used to. I actually played this game on PlayStation for this review, so I'm gonna go over the PlayStation controls. The left joystick moves your character while the right one moves your flashlight or parallel. You run by pushing the square button and interact with everything by pushing the X button. The camera which shows your character is automatic, so that's where the clunkiness comes in as sometimes it's out of position. Now they did some of this for effect, but it doesn't work all the time in the game. And it becomes very frustrating to move your character when the camera changes without you controlling it. Now, the camera obscura is your main attack in this game. And it can be brought up by using the circle button. Basically, you move the left joystick to focus the optical and you use the right joystick to move slowly forward and back. This again takes some time to get used to as the enemies do appear very quickly. You hit X to target your enemy when it's in sights and it actually causes damage. You can also fill up a bar on the bottom of the camera. The longer you focus with the optical, the more powerful the attack is. But then again, remember, the enemies are quick. So using it, it has to be an entirely same matter. The camera can be upgraded with stronger film, stronger attacks. The attacks and special features that are also in it are upgraded by snapping pictures not only during your fights, but of random things as they appear. So if you see a random ghost snapping a picture of it at a good time, will actually get you some points that you can use for upgrades. Throughout the game, there are save states and you can find them on your map by the blue dots. And it's basically a camera that you go to and you save in. This game actually relies on a lot of collecting certain clues that can be triggered by your camera or by exploration and searching areas. You also eventually collect a tape player that can be used to listen to tapes of victims that were either killed in the house or were investigating the mansion. September 12th, 9 a.m. I found Koji. His death was just like the one in the mountain village. His head and limbs were severed. I can't believe what's happening. Along with the collection aspect and exploring aspect of the game, there are puzzles that are actually in here. 
Would you rather be assembling the correct numbers in the correct order or inputting numbers or even assembling certain stones in certain areas? As I said, there's a lot of exploration in this game and using your camera, the readings you find or the tapes you listen to will actually help you with that as you progress. So my final thoughts on the game, I really enjoyed the atmosphere the game sets from the horror theme music to the different sound effects that go on in the background to the uneasy mystery of the unknown throughout the game. As you open doors, you're kind of anticipating what's going to happen next. And also, I really, really liked the way the cinematic features in the game or cutscenes played into the game. In my opinion, this game is actually more scary than my previous review of Blair Witch and this game was created 20 years earlier, which is amazing. I remember first seeing this game at the Electronics Boutique back in 02 and I was told by the person as I was buying it to play it in the dark. So I recommend you do that because it actually does add a lot of the effect to the game. And if you have some he a headset, I would recommend doing that as well as you won't be disappointed. The game, however, is a slow burn. So it relies heavily on atmosphere, exploration, and patience. So if you're not really into exploration and backtracking, this may not be for you. But if you are, like I said, you won't be disappointed. The game is available to play on PS3, which is how I played it, through the PS Network store. I bought it for 10 bucks, but you can also find the original copies for on eBay or Amazon, wherever you like Craigslist. But remember, they might be a little expensive as the game is having a cult following, especially the later sequels. And yes, there were sequels and three extra release after this. So they're a little hard to find. But if you do like this game, I would recommend playing the sequels in the future. Anyway, that's my thoughts on the game. And as always, thank you so very much for watching and have a great rest of your day.